Welcome to the news and why it matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez. Today we are joined by a very special guest, uh, Joanna Rodriguez. Thanks for being here, Joanna. Joanna um, is an activist, but she is actually a very, uh, very good Venezuelan expert because she used to live there. Her family is still there. Um, so what a day for you to be in, Joanna. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Chad, what is the top story for you? I'm an activist. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what I'm active. I'm, I'm a lazy, I'm a lazy fist is what I am at 46 years of old. It's an age, uh, yeah, whatever. So top story today, I want to talk about an invasion of culture and how America is being blindsided in a, very, in a way that, we're, that is very deceptive. All right. It's going to surprise you how it comes across. Okay, Andrew. Uh, normally, elections are between the two sides fighting and seeing who, who can swing better at a particular issue, but there's an issue that I think almost all of the candidates, Republican and Democrats, can get behind, and I want to see who races to the front of that issue. Hmm. All right, and uh, Joanna? Well, it's uh, going on in current events and Twitter. You see it trending, hopefully, on your timeline. We're talking about Venezuela and what is going on there with military coming in support of Juan Guaido. All right, a lot to get into there. Obviously, first we want to thank our sponsor, iTarget Pro. Um, so iTarget Pro is awesome because whenever I talk about them, I get to talk about how they have laser bullets. <laughs> laser bullets. Um, but serious, seriously, uh, the, the best way, Joanna, you, you're big into to Second Amendment, Absolutely. right? The best way to learn your gun is to dry fire. Um, every gun is different. I, I know you're probably going to make fun of me, but I have a little baby 380 at home. Um, and I'm not. I have the same. Do you? Yeah. Okay. It's the only one that I, can, <laughs> I feel comfortable with. But I, my trigger pull, the, the pull is really, really long. It's always longer than I expect. And so iTarget Pro, you can actually dry fire. You can get a, a feel for your gun. Chad, I know you really want one. I do. I really do. I, I got to get you one. Yeah. Um, but so you put the laser bullet in there. Can I have a gun? No. I, we don't trust no. you with a gun. Why don't I get a gun? We're, We're passing them out to Chad yeah. and the guests. <laughs> we, we don't trust you with a gun quite okay, yet. Okay, fine. Mm. Uh, but you put, the, you put the laser bullet in there. You fire away uh, over and over. You can even keep track, as you guys can see who are watching it on the television. Uh, you can keep track of where you're That's where our you're HR guy. Shooting. <laughs> <laughs> we aren't the HR guy? He gets a gun? <laughs> um, so Father's Day is coming up in a couple months. Uh, get your father and iTarget Pro. It pays for itself once you think about range costs and ammunition fees. It pays for itself. Go to iTargetPro.com. You can use promo code NEWS and you will get 10% off right now with free shipping. That is iTargetPro.com. All right, Chad. You know, here's the thing, and I was just looking up these, these pictures. I'm kind of going through these things, and I know it sounds kind of silly, but I want to talk about the latest announcement from Sports Illustrated's swimsuit issue. Now, you look at this young lady right here. She's obviously a beautiful girl, okay? Goes without saying. The point, though, that Sports Illustrated is trying to make is she's going to be the first model in their swimsuit issue that represents the Muslim heritage. She is wearing what they're calling not only a hijab, which is a, a somewhat of a head covering, but she's wearing what they're referring to as a burkini. So it's not a, it's not a bikini and it's not a burqa. It's a burkini. And you could tell she's laying down in as the normal, stereotypical, lustful pose as one is oft to find in a Sports Illustrated swimsuit. I room. always, when I go to the beach, I always lay like that. Yeah, I know you lay, you get out in like half submerged in people's <laughs> pee and fecal matter, and yes. some of it's theirs and some of it's yours, and you just lay lustfully there. In the... I find it comfortable to put my arm up like that. <laughs> yeah. On the other hand. So, so this down. is supposed to be representative of of this, you know, Islam influence and obviously this inclusive culture that we live in these days. And the problem with that is you say, well, it's just a Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. What's the big deal? Well, the issue is this. If this woman, and again, a lovely girl, and I don't know that she's ever worn a burqa in her life. I, I have no idea what her heritage is. I know, don't know what her background is, but I know what they're representing. This is another opportunity for the mainstream to say, okay, uh, this is where the world is going. It is an all-inclusive, non-assimilating amalgam of p cultural you know, differences, but we can all get along. I appreciate the idea in theory. If she were to do this in Iran, wearing her burkini, she would be beheaded. Now, granted, the guy that beheaded her could happily look at the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue and the rest of his buddies, and while Allah would not like it, they would get away with it, okay? The reason I'm bringing this up is because this is yet another opportunity for the powers that be to bring in something that is vastly different from American culture. And when I say American, I mean those who adhere to the Constitution of the United States and say, 
we're going to make this religion much more palatable and westernize it so that you can swallow it. This is what it looks like. That is not what Islam looks like. That is not at all what it looks like in those countries. They don't wear burkinis. They don't. And so the idea that we can bring this in and, and then everybody can just get along and we can accept everybody's different cultures, that's fine. But, you know, in, in Brunei, they're stoning gays. In other countries, they're throwing gays off of buildings. Uh, women are being beaten. You don't have to go very far on Twitter or any social media to see a video of a woman being, uh, being beaten by her spouse, slapped around, kids being slapped around. So to honor this, and, I, and I've said this, I've gone on record before and said that, that I, I, I've caught a lot of flack for it, and I don't care, I'll continue to catch flack. I'm not Islamophobic because I'm not afraid of a Muslim. I'm, I'm not afraid of anybody, so I'm not Islamophobic, I, but I've seen cultures. Islam is not a religion of peace. Very, you, can, you, you are hard-pressed to find any place on the planet where it has existed as a regime, as a philosophy, as a, as a theocracy, as an ideology, as a religion that's in control where there has been long-lasting peace. You might could point to Malaysia, Indonesia, places like that, but otherwise it's not a religion of peace. And so we're trying to make this much more palatable. And so what happens is you have people who look at an Ilan Omar who's consistently saying publicly her anti-Semitic remarks, and we're saying, oh, well, she just misunderstood. You know, we, we look at, look, it doesn't look all that bad. It's a beautiful girl in a Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition. And I think as we go forward, we're going to get more and more into this where these things become, one, uh, lustful, they get laughable, and they get laundered, and it becomes easy for us to accept as an American, as an American culture. And I, I, that is dangerous. Ooh, all right. I feel like I was just taking a church right there. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, Andrew, you want to weigh in? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I get uh, the stuff called cunefe, which is like, if you, have you had baklava before? Yes. It's okay, so cunefe is like baklava soaked in honey with, with molten cheese at the bottom. I can't wait it's, to see where it, you're going with it's it. A <laughs> Turkish, it's a Turkish dish. It's the best dessert in the world. It's my favorite. The guys I get it from perfectly fine. They're Muslim. They're welcome in my neighborhood. They're welcome in the United States. And if their daughters are hot, they're welcome on magazines I buy. So I am perfectly fine with this woman being on there. I, I think that the, the big part of the United States is not that we've got a particular culture, it's that we're a pluralistic culture. So if, uh, if someone wants to be on the, on the cover of Sports Illustrated and they're Muslim, I'd like to see more skin, but I'm not remotely bothered by <laughs> what the religion is. Like if, if, she were, if she were the exact same person and they said she's Unitarian, I'd be like, well, she's welcome on there, she should show some cleavage, but that's fine. So my, my position overall is... She should mow her uh, grass. I, I don't, and I, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push back on you a little bit, Chad. I don't think that Islam's monolithic in the same way that I don't think like... I know a lot of Christians that wouldn't want Roy Moore to be their stand-in for what they view as Christianity. Uh, there are a lot of very peaceful, very nice Muslims that serve me meals, and, and all you know. The, the, I'm not saying they all do that. They but, serve but you. They serve oh, me meals. Nice, no, that that cunefe, Go get cunefe. Uh So so I I I think I'm fine with it. It doesn't bother me at well, all. Well, you know, on, on my show, on the Chad Prather show, we have these little shorts where we have high balls with heat, and we're, where Andrew and I I'm drink usually, alcohol, yeah, I I'm usually and we debate topics. So he and I are good at going back and forth with each other, and, and we have a great time with that. But, uh, but again, okay, pluralism is a dangerous and slippery slope to get into. It really is, because if you're going to accept these many, you've got to keep accepting those in there. Where do you cut off the, the pluralistic you, you, folks you that are coming off, in there? If, if it gets violent, you cut it off. Okay, but if, so if to that point... If it becomes you cut it off. To that point, so to, to say that Islam and the folks that you're buying baklava from, because I can't say the... Cu what is it? Cunefe. 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 So, Look it up. so if, if I'm going to go by Cunefe, here's the thing. I don't care if, if your peaceful practicing Muslim is practicing Islam. However, those in the Middle East are going to say that they are infidels just like you are. And until I see moderate practicing Muslims come out and unequivocally condemn extreme Islam, they're part of the you, problem you too. Got that, though. You've got plenty of Muslims in the United States that come not, out and condemn it all the time. Not true, moderate practicing Muslims. Folks that, I mean, very few. There are some out there, occasionally you'll find some, some imams that will come out there and say that, but they would still consider them. You send them to, to uh, Yemen, they, they're going to be considered infidels. They'll behead them. They're not part of what, they're not part of that culture. They're just not. They are Americanized, they are bastardized, and in the opinion of the average Muslim in the Middle East, they look at them and say they've sold out, they've gone to the yeah, great but that's their problem. That's not our problem. If you're an American and you're living in Kansas and <laughs> oh, you're, look, you're a I'm Muslim, not, I'm not like, saying that keep, we should have being camps in Kansas. and we should have internment camps for Muslims. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that where it has predominantly been the religious uh, ideology, theocracy, the the uh, political head, it has not lasted in peace for any long period of time. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Now in America, we haven't had that. We haven't had a theocracy yeah. either, and I that's and I that would kind of be we my haven't. thing there. So like, don't but, get a theocracy. But Muslim countries do. 
They do. They do operate under what they perceive to be, you know, Sunni Muslims, Shia Muslims. They all, all the way to the Wahhabi Muslim extremists. They believe they operate under a theocracy. Joanna, you want to jump in here? We need we need the female feedback yes. here. <laughs> I read this book once. Uh, I believe it's called uh, Searching for Allah, Finding Jesus, something along those terms. And mm -hmm. it really opened up my eyes um, to the Muslim religion because as this uh, young man is searching for a way to empower himself uh, as a Muslim and find out more, he ends up finding out those uh, violent tendencies that exist in the Islamic uh, religion. So it's yeah. really interesting. And I do understand your point, Chad, is that, you know, you're not, it's not a, a, a bigoted thing. It's just to normalize a culture that, you know, Ilana wants to Omar throw gays off buildings yeah. is not really a great thing to well, do here in the United States. might be some people fleeing those awful regimes as well for that exact reason, in which case, come on over and, and hang which, out. Which, again, in those country. regimes would still consider them bastardizing infidels. Because yeah, those regimes are terrible. It, they are terrible, and I agree with you, and they should be, I mean, they're not, they, they I don't want to get into too many words that get me in trouble, but <laughs> they're not good. But if you follow the Koran to the letter of the thing, it, it, it's, it is very outspoken about what you do with the infidel. And, and that's a fact. She's an infidel. Oh, She's I'm, a beautiful infidel. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, but I'm with you. I'm, I'm going to turn yeah, the page yeah, and get the, the skin. The, the, the regimes are bad. We can all agree on you skin. Can, there's where we find common <laughs> yeah. ground here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really and I don't care if it's yep. black, yellow, red, brown, white, peach. I don't care what color your skin is. We just need the skin. Andrew, last word. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, yeah. Um, I, I just I want to make a distinction. There's a difference between a, a theocratic Muslim regime and a Muslim, right? The, the sure. theocratic Muslim Agreed. regime's bad. Like I like I think the Saudi Arabian government's terrible. I don't know why we're friends with them. Agreed. They're they're a theocratic medieval monarchy. Uh, but there's plenty of like you know fine people that are Muslim that are, are willing to be a part of the American experience, individual rights, pluralism, all that kind of thing. And if you want to do that and be over here, then you're welcome and you're just as. I'm American sure you'd as admit that Sharia and yeah. and the Constitution cannot coexist. 100. percent I 100 percent agree with you there. I I uh, if you're talking about a form of government that's predicated exactly. on a religion, I'm 100 percent against that. What I'm trying to do is make a distinction with you can be a Muslim without being a theocrat. You can be a Muslim without being in favor of. And, and I would agree with that, except those regimes would consider them infidels. Yes, they would. Andrew just wants the dessert. He just doesn't want to No, he's them. just watered down, like they have, they've watered down Islam <laughs> like they are in Sports Illustrated. <laughs> we like the watered down version All right, of back, Islam. Back in a minute. <laughs> All right, before we get back into the conversation, I want to thank our sponsor, Relief Factor. Um, so I was in a car accident in 2013 and just screwed up everything. It's amazing how just one accident just completely affects your entire life. My back was all messed up. I had protruding discs. Um, I had my knee messed up. And the knee I got taken care of, the back I just could not... It would not go away. It was just a constant nagging pain. I did massage, I did acupuncture, a whole bunch of hippie stuff too, and nothing worked. Um, and then I came over to the Blaze and started using Relief Factor. A bunch of people here were using it. Um, it's 100% natural, so it's drug free, and it fights the inflammation, which is the root cause of uh, a lot of people's pain. They just don't realize it. So if you are trying prescriptions, pharmaceutical you know, drugs, and you are not finding relief, which I think is a lot of people out there, because I think it's like 66% of people who live in pain just think that they're going to just always live like that, um, try Relief Factor. I know it, it could be life-changing. It was life-changing for me to not just live in constant pain. Um, you can go to relieffactor.com right now. Get your uh, quick start pack. It is a three-week quick start pack for $19.95. 70% of the people who buy that go on to keep buying Relief Factor. So it's working for the majority of people. It works for us over here at The Blaze. It can work for you too. Go to relieffactor.com. Uh, Andrew, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and I feel like we're just talking about, you know, oppressive regimes, uh, you know, uh, it's probably a good transition to discuss what's going on in Venezuela. I yield the floor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Speaker. Really appreciate it. Uh, so, Joanna, I know you left Venezuela in 2001? Uh, yes, okay. I was really young. <laughs> yes, uh, but your family is still there right now. So let's, let's get into what's going on there right now um, in the news and then yeah, absolutely. So this morning I received a call from my mom. I think it was like 5.30 a.m. She was hysterical in tears. I thought, you know, someone in my close family had died. 
and she told me to turn on the news, sent me a link, and it turns out that uh, Juan Guaido was surrounded uh, with uh, military members, National Guard members, who were in support of him, which is something that we have not seen in the past with what is going on in Venezuela. And since this morning, there have been people on the streets peacefully protesting um, for the support of uh, Juan Guaido and for Nicolás Maduro to step down. And this is, this is really, really big for the people of Venezuela in their search for freedom and liberty. Um, and I do want to mention in the protests, there has been some, some violence um, from the military. And I do want to warn you guys, we are about to show a video that could be disturbing. So if you have children in the room, whatever, just be warned. Um, there was, you know, at, at some points today, they had the armed trucks. There they are, actually, um, you know, the protesters are there, and then you've got the other trucks coming in and actually just mowing down, mowing down the Venezuelan people. Um, Joanna, you've got, you've got family members that are, um, they're over there. And are they taking part in these protests? Yes, I actually got the most adorable picture of my great aunt and my aunt, and they are in Altamira, uh, marching. Thankfully, they, as long as I've heard, they are safe and they're fine. They're not with uh, some of the more violent areas of what's happening. But it is scary because you don't have connections with them. The internet is spotty. They can only communicate really through WhatsApp whenever they have ability to connect with us. And you just live in fear of, is my family going to be okay? Am I going to be able to hear from them tonight? And after that image was shown, after that video was shown, it was being broadcasted on CNN. And I think it's important to note that um, CNN International was actually cut off after that in Venezuela. So they did a blackout. And I believe BBC Global as well was cut off in Venezuela. And the government, um, the illegitimate government of Nicolás Maduro is completely blocking off communication of Venezuelans being able to communicate with each other and being able to hear what is actually going on in the streets. So what would you um, say to those who say that this is a, an attempted coup? It's complicated because it's hard for people not to, under, like, to, to understand the complexities of what's going on in Venezuela, but Juan Guaido is a legitimate president. And if he is the president, how can this be a coup if this is his Venezuela. You know, and with a constitution that was that was accepted in 1999. So this goes back, you know, 20 years. It, there is a valid government on 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 the books that mm -hmm. exists, and Maduro has has consistently held this regime in place. And you know, I'm always fascinated by the people who want to be experts in the subject matter of socialism, who have never been oppressed in any way, mm -hmm. shape, or form, mm -hmm. who want to get on their thousand-dollar uh, phones and mm -hmm. tweet out how you know <laughs> socialism would work if we just try it. And you have people who we've seen the atrocities that have gone on in Venezuela. My good friend Anna, we were just talking off the air. She it took her seven years, but yesterday she sent me a picture of her of her signed statement from the president saying congratulations. She's now a citizen of the United States, and she's excited about that. And I always try to say, let's defer to the people who know, like yourself, who have family there, boots on the ground, so to speak, who are seeing this experience and, and living it out. And let's, let's hear what they think, because what I've heard is not so great. It, I'm glad that you brought that up, because on social media, specifically Twitter, I've been berated for talking about Venezuela. And most of the time, uh, it is from Americans, white Americans, who have absolutely no idea what's going on in Venezuela. They're like, you can't support the United States intervention in Venezuela. And it's not. It's not a I don't, U.S. I don't support a U.S. intervention in Venezuela. I also don't support oppressive socialists running Venezuela. Right. Yeah. Like, I, like, I don't think... It's not an either or thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I don't think we should get involved with it militarily. At the same time, like, I really hope that the legitimate president's able to oust the socialist dictator. Uh, mm -hmm. That would be a good outcome, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. Go, go ahead, John. You even have Democrats who are calling out Nicolás Maduro and telling him to leave and step down uh, peacefully. What you hear silence on is from Bernie Sanders and other left-leaning Democrats. And the telling thing about that is you have Cuba who's come in and they're supporting Maduro and they're fighting on, this, on the behalf of this regime. Anything Cuba's getting behind is problematic because that means Russia is behind it, and that's problematic. And I, I encourage Russia, whether it's our elections or our hemisphere, to stay out. We don't need you. And so Cuba coming in, that's a telltale sign of what we're up against.
Joanna, um, what would you say to um, people, and I heard this a lot on social media this morning, people who their argument is, well, Venezuela doesn't have it that bad. Um, you're not being told the truth. The United States has it worse. Uh, this is legitimately what I heard, was that we have so many people in poverty. We have police killing the other people in the streets. We have, I mean, actually legitimately saying the United Nebraska, States. Nebraska, Venezuela. Right. Nebraska, <laughs> Venezuela. You, you know, the yeah. United States has problems to too. The media is making it look like Venezuela has more problems than they actually do. What would you say to that? I mean, problems exist in every country in the world. Um, but what you can't hide is the fact that inflation in Venezuela is over 73,000%. Yeah. That minimum wage is $3 a month in Venezuela. But their goods are still priced at American prices. A carton of eggs will be $3, and they've just wasted their entire monthly paycheck on a carton of eggs. Mm -hmm. These problems exist, and it doesn't lessen the severity of what's going on in the U.S., because we do have our own problems. But there is a severe humanitarian crisis happening in Venezuela. Let me ask you a question because I had someone who posed a question to me this morning and they said, well, you know, this is in the cities. These people that are out in the villages growing their own food and planting their own things and all this stuff, it's not really affecting them, is it? And I, I had my answer. I want to hear what you have to say because I, yeah, it is a humanitarian, aid, it, a humanitarian crisis. I watched a documentary uh, specifically about food production in Venezuela and they don't have that anymore. It showed a uh, landscape that used to be for farming in Venezuela. And after the government took over of production, those farms, those farmlands and those farmers have been pushed out. They are not able to provide food for their own people. Mm -hmm. They are waiting for government hands out. They are waiting for the government to give you that fish and feed them for the day. And just so happens that government's running out of fish to give out. So socializing agriculture is a great way to kill people. If you need to kill a ton of people, socialize agriculture. What they did in the Soviet Union, that was, was they would go, uh, well, you, you, don't, you don't own the land, so you don't have any incentive to do this other than we're going to punish you unless you do this thing. And then, and then they went, well, we need more food. Uh, you farmers, every from now on, you got to mow an addition, not mow, rake. I don't know who knows agriculture terms here. You got to, you got to claw, you got to plow, plow. Uh, and I'm from Oklahoma. Leave it to the guy really? in the cowboy hat. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. you they, they went. You, you've got to plow uh, an additional 20 hectares every day. And so what the farmers did, because again, it's not, it, they're not involved in the process in terms of self-interest. Is they went okay, and they just raised up the plow, uh, plow shares so that they were going to do like half an inch of soil, and then everybody starves to death. And so there's, there's all sorts of the, 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 uh, the Venezuelan government is such a a incredible emblem of where socialism just completely implodes. Like you brought up inflation a minute ago. I started paying attention to this maybe four years ago, and the story that brought me in was that there were uh, shopkeeps that weren't even counting money anymore. They were just weighing stacks of money. That would be the equivalent of going to the bank in America and getting just $20,000 and just uh, Walmart not even looking at it and going, okay, well, it looks like it's maybe four pounds. Okay, you can get some eggs. It's yeah. amazing. Um, Joanna, uh, before we go, how is it, because I'm trying to wrap my head around how it is that Americans can be latching on to this idea of socialism at the exact same time socialism is completely collapsing Venezuela? I think we're used to instant gratification. We have the likes on Twitter, the likes on Instagram. We want things now. And it happens a lot in millennials and people my age, unfortunately, and younger. We want things now. We want free college. We want cheaper and free health care. We want all these free, 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 give me, give me, give me. And you're not really looking at the long-term effects of what this has on our country. Yeah. All right, back in a minute. Uh, speaking of socialism and its awful effects, we have a special Glenn is doing. It is called Socialism, A Warning from the Dead. Uh, they're actually, that's why they're, they're not here, our regularly occurring uh, figures here. They're not here because they're over there on the other set working on this. They've done a lot, a lot of hard work. It's amazing what they've uncovered. Um, it is going to be tomorrow at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. It is also going to be for free on Blaze TV, on Glenn Beck's Facebook, and also on Blaze TV's YouTube. So be sure to check it out. Um, Joanna, I feel like it's probably going to go over a lot of things that you already know, and you sit around here and you're like, you stupid Americans. You have no idea. You just don't even get it. Uh, so make sure to tune in. Again, it is going to be free on Blaze TV. And hey, if you have not already done so, I don't know what you're waiting for, but subscribe to Blaze TV. You can get $10 off of your annual subscription with promo code NEWS. And we will see you guys in overtime.